Shalom and welcome to another weekly Bible study as we continually write and divide the word of truth. There again, I'd like to welcome all YouTubers, social media, anybody viewing past, present, Lord willing, future videos. Now, in tonight's study, we're going to continue with uh, the things that have, in the word of God, that have been so convoluted by heresies, false teaching, false doctrine, which was prophesied by the prophets or by the apostles and by Christ. Uh, so it's not something that was not warned to us about those that are seeking God's word, the truth. Uh, so at the end of the first century, we had Peter revealing all the heresies coming in and denying the husband, Christ Jesus, that purchased, redeemed, bought them. Now, for those who has been following videos and understand them, is who he went to the cross to redeem, the first fruits of Israel. Now, for a lot of people, I get replies. Uh, one guy even replied what I was talking about, the church was raised from the dead, that uh, I need to take that Bible and burn it. I... You're not, when you say these things, people, you are you can lash out at me all you want to, but you're going to be judged for every word that comes out of your mouth, whether it be good or evil. And these people are very immature. They don't even know what they're talking about. And, of course, where we're sitting and understanding, there has been false teaching going on since the end of the first century, which bring in a damnable heresy, and the heresy denies Jesus Christ and went to the cross, died, the temple rent top to bottom, the rocks are rent, and the graves open. There's an earthquake, and the graves open. And many saints that slept arose and come out of their tombs with Christ's resurrection three days and nights later. That has been covered up. So all, you have to, all Satan had to do with the other gospel, the other Jesus, the other spirit, is teach Christ's resurrection and leave the many saints that slept who Christ was commissioned from heaven by his Father to come and redeem the first fruits of Israel, the Israel under the law. And that's what he was sent to do. Uh, Fifty days later, at the appointed fullness of Pentecost, by the promise of the Father, which was made back to Abraham, that we're going to show here just in a minute, that God promised every bit of this to Abraham and his seed. See, so, so this promise that was made to Abraham was 430 years before Moses ever received the law through uh, the covenant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Jacob being Israel and his 12 sons, the 12 tribes. If you don't understand that, it don't, I mean, you, you've got to understand why all this come about. In Adam, we all died. So when the fullness of time come, the man Abraham, that he was made a friend, Abraham, believed God. And so he made a covenant that cannot be annulled by the law of Moses. And that covenant was a promise from a man to man covenant. That God does not lie. He keeps his word. No matter what, he keeps his word. And he did. So the point we're going to be seeing as we continue in this is how convoluted and how all these heresies and false teaching come in and all of man's doctrine since the end of the first century now, people, this is not something that happened in the 1800s or, or 1500s or, or 1000 A.D. or 500 A.D. It happened the end of the apostles' uh, teaching that these damn little heresies. Now, there again, understand the, the teaching is the heresy or false teaching is they would deny Jesus Christ that come from heaven the word made flesh and redeemed the first fruits of Israel under the law. That would be covered up. That would be contradicted. Now all you got to do is think for the last 1900 years 
uh, when people talk to me, well, I don't, you don't find any of what you're talking about in church history. Well, you're not going to find it in so-called church history. That's the, the other Jesus, the other gospel, uh, the other spirit, people. You're not going to find that going back and looking at church history. We were warned at the end of the first century that these false teachers and would come in and deny the husband, Jesus, that redeemed, purchased uh, the first fruits under the law. See, that's not taught, but see, that's what he come to do. We're going to see verses that he plainly says this, and then we're going to look at some things that's going to rebuke everything I was raised in, the Baptist doctrine, and all these other doctrines. We're at the end, people. And the world is going to get caught as a thief, just like the scripture says, uh, because they are in uh, the false teaching or the heresies that we all inherited. Now, there again, I'm not saying that a bad, these Baptist preachers uh, are deceiving people because they want to deceive them. They're deceiving people because being, in, being deceived, they continually are deceived, as they deceive others. That goes on with all of the denominational doctrines. See? So it's not it's not that there's like, oh, I can't wait to deceive my congregation Sunday. No, they are deceived by darkness, by Satan, uh, and and then with their teaching deceive those that come and listen or come and, and, and obey their doctrines of men, whether you're whatever denomination, non-denomination you belong to. So so understand when I say, Peter said they deny the husband, Jesus, that redeemed them, it's not talking about our redemption through the Spirit. It's talking about when Christ died on the tree. you got to understand it. We're going to see that. It's, it's in there very plain, but look. It completely destroys him dying on the tree for my sins and yours because the scripture don't teach that. Now, it's going to, you know, when you say, well, boy, that's a, you need to take that, as that guy said, you need to take that Bible and burn it. Well, I feel sorry for these people because uh, they don't know what they're saying, and the more that they say that, the further away and the, and the more they're going to be judged according to what come out of their mouth, their works, see? Be better not say anything. If you don't believe it, just cut this off and go on about your business. But if you happen to have an interest, then get your Bible out and go over the study with us is what we do. Uh, so very, very important here, people. What And what's going to be seen tonight is not going to be what's taught out there because there again, you got to go back to the end of the first century, century and see the prophecy of iniquity and false teaching coming in. You've got to go back there to see what was happening. Now, the truth of the gospel I preach is in the fullness of time the Father sent His only begotten Son from heaven, the Word made flesh, born under the law, and he come through the channel of a woman, Virgin Mary, under the law to buy back, redeem those under the law, and he fulfilled that. You see? That was his mission. And then, as he left on the 40th day, the Omer count and told his apostles, tarry right here in Jerusalem, because the promise of God, the Father, this is the other promise, we have promises, but the other promise is the Father would send the Holy Spirit to reveal what Christ had come to accomplish and fulfill by redeeming the Israel under the law. Now, see, if that is the ground, uh, that is the foundation of what happened, and that foundation, you can't add on top of that only to build on it, but you can't add or take away from that. So see, it's not just the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's in his resurrection with the many saints that slept with the first fruits of Israel, which we know is numbered in Revelation 7 as the 144,000, 12 tribes of children of Israel from Judah, the order, every man in his own order, 12,000 from Judah, uh, Reuben, Gad, all the way down to Joseph and Benjamin. 
That's the order of all eternity. That's the way the order will be. So we know that. So, but the point I'm saying, that's why he come. So who did he really die for? Well, we're going to see exactly what he said the night of the Passover. The night that he had the Passover meal with his chosen apostles, uh, and one was, uh, of course, Judas, Satan, uh, the son, uh, or son of perdition there, you could say, the devil. But we're going to see exactly what the blood covenant of the New Testament is about. So uh, if you got your notes and study notes and stuff, be sure to make notes here uh, for those that are serious. But you're going to see it's not hard once we see exactly what the Scripture says. Now, for all of these dispensationalists and for these that say the King James Bible only, and uh, that's the inherent word of God only. Well, we're going to see in their King James Bible, I use the King James with a strong number, but I look at the Greek text. We're going to see very plainly uh, things that Christ said in the King James red letters, what he said, and then for those that follow these people, if you happen to see this video, you might ought to question them because they are deceiving you people. Well, what do you mean, Larry? They're deceived because they do not preach the blood of Christ was for the pardon of their, of whose sins? Our sins? That's not what it says. We're going to see that. And I know that's going to be shocking to most people because nobody's ever showed that or taught that. I understand that. But there again, it was covered up in the first century. But it's right in the King James Bible, very plain to see. See, so they have interjected their doctrine of man, which has been inherited. They didn't come up. They inherited from the uh, a break off of a Baptist or Church of Christ or, or whatever, Catholicism. So you got to understand that. But the point I'm going to show tonight, hopefully, for those that are interested, uh, you could, you're going to read the same words I'm going to show you. It just depends on if the Spirit is going to convict you to see and to understand and to seek God and turn to Him for the truth. Okay, so now I wanted to say that it's not picking on these false teachers or dispensationalists, but they are in error. And being in error, they're leading all of those being blind, the blind, and they all end up in the pit, in the ditch. See, that's what Christ is talking about. Okay, so I'm going to go to the Lord's Prayer, and then we're going to, uh, we're going to, I'm going to go back to Genesis just to show you when God made this promise to Abraham. He made the land covenant, and he also made the promise through Isaac. Uh, the promised seed would become uh, Jacob, and he would get the blessing, and that covenants and promises God promised through Abraham and his seed uh, forever until ages. Okay, so let's go to the Lord's Prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, come into being on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us for our debts, we forgive our debtors. Lead us not in testing, but deliver us from the wicked one. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the ages of ages. In Christ's name we pray. Praise our Father, Yah, and we do welcome at all times those that understand the mystery. Uh, we welcome our brethren in heaven that was redeemed out of the dirt 2,000 years ago when Christ died on the tree. And then three days and nights later on unleavened bread, Christ got up, they got up. And they are the one new man, the new creation. <clears throat> and, and the mystery is spiritually we're seated with them in heaven and spiritually we've ascended to the only church there is that was redeemed out of the ground, which Paul reveals, which uh, is the one new man. And if you believe, then the Father adds you to that ecclesia, which is the body of Messiah, which is from the beginning, the firstborn ek out of the dead, Colossians 1.18. If you understand, that's what Paul revealed. So this guy that said, well, I've never heard of a church raised from the dead. Let's, let's burn that Bible. Well, you need to go read Colossians 1.18. Uh, so that will tell you where the church, where it come from. It ascended to heaven, and it's getting ready to come back to its own borders 
And then that's when we will be called up. Those that believe and have been found worthy in the first resurrection, we will meet Christ and our brethren and all those that had a good report and the two witnesses because the two witnesses is the catalyst, is the narrative to the resurrection or the last trump. They were prophesied 1260 days against the beast, the false prophet, and once their testimony and prophecy is over, which torments the whole inhabited world, the beast will overcome and kill them, and then they lie dead in the strait or where our Lord was crucified, exactly where he was crucified. They will lie dead for three and a half days, and then when God breathes the Ruach in them and they stand up, that is when Paul says, sudden destruction then comes up on a woman like a child and birth pains. That is when the peace and safety and sudden destruction, when the witnesses are lying dead for the world to see where our Lord is crucified and not put in any tomb, uh, when three and a half days is up, God breathes life, and when they stand up, that is when judgment comes upon this world, people. Because then the nation and the beast are angry, and they will go make war with the Lamb, the Battle of Armageddon. And that is the worst time it's ever been, ever will be on, on this earth again. Okay, so hopefully there's, there's gonna, we're going to see exactly why Christ went to the tree and died and poured and shed his blood. All right, so first let's look here at this promise that God made to Abraham here in Genesis. God made the covenant with Abraham, a man covenant here. And the law, of course, can't annul that covenant Paul reveals in Galatians. So let's look in verse 5. And he took Abraham and brought him forth abroad... That's the King James, which is okay in that. Well, let's look at that, and then we'll look at the apostolic. Abroad, and said, Look now toward heaven, Abraham, and tell the stars up there if I be able to number the stars. And he said to him, So shall thy seed be. What an amazing... Now, this is God's promise to Abraham, people. And this is the promise that was fulfilled at the cross about 3,500 years or so later. All right, so now let's, let's look at the apostolic here. And we have, we have the, uh, the Greek uh, Strong's number here, the Septuagint. And so let's look and uh, see, uh, I've got it highlighted here. And he led him outside and said to him, Abraham, look up. Indeed, into the heaven, and count out the stars, if you are able to count them, oh, exclamation point. So why was this imperative here? Because there is a number of them, Abraham, uh, if you can count them. And he's thus said, same as your King James of the Hebrew Strongs, that will be as your seed. Okay, now, people, what's very interesting here, these stars in heaven that's going to be as Abraham's seed is who Christ is going to come and redeem under the law. Abraham, Isaac got the blessing, and through uh, Jacob and Esau, Jacob got the blessing. And through the 12 tribes of Jacob, who was in all their iniquity, even the kingdom split when Christ was born and the first fruits were born, under the law, the kingdom was split, only Judah back from captivity. But, but King David said he knew the hope of the Israel would be redeemed in Israel's iniquity. King David knew this same prophecy in Psalms 130. I've showed it many times. All right, so the point I'm showing you here, we already know now. We know exactly who these stars uh, that using the symbolic of the stars in heaven uh, who that is referring to now, and we know that, that Christ come to redeem them under the law, and they are the first fruits, and they, that equals the number of them in Revelation 7. So here Abraham is, hey, if you count the number of them, Abraham, there's a number. Well, we've been given the number, Revelation 7, 4. 
and I heard the number of them was 144,000 uh, tribes of the children of Israel started with the sealing of Judah through Benjamin. We've got all that revealed to us now, people. So that's not 144,000 that's going to show up. There's no seven years. All of that's false teaching, people. We've already we proved that this and what and this I'm going back to show you this is not now the earthly Israel, this is the heavenly kingdom. This is the one Daniel deciphered through Nebuchadnezzar. This is the mystery of this kingdom. No one will take over Daniel said. All Daniel is about this kingdom here. Okay, so I wanted to show you that. Now I want to go, we're going to go right to, straight to the cross here on the Last Supper. And it, we'll look in Matthew here and we're going to see some amazing things here. It's just all been taken out of context and convoluted. And, of course, that brings in the heresies. So let's look at Matthew uh, 20, 26. And let's look in <clears throat> verse 28. So if you've got your scripture or your King James Bible, whatever, uh, you know, if you even use an American standard or what, it's going to, in English, pretty much the same, but we have to, we have to see in the Greek, we have to look at some things here, and so we see in 28, 26, 28, and I will even go now, because I've got it all highlighted, I'll go to the red letter King James Bible. Now, <clears throat> I want, I'm going to say this, so we'll get this footing laid here. And a lot of y'all know who I'm talking about. And, of course, it's not about uh, the man or the woman. It's what they teach or what comes out of what they're teaching. And, of course, uh, the people they're deceiving. And there again, they don't know they're deceived. Uh, and, of course, the people following them uh, don't know that they're being deceived either. That's what Satan does. He sees that he... He deceives the whole inhabited world unless the true light of the gospel shines in. Now, we're going to show what the true light is of the gospel right here in just a minute. So I wanted you to understand. So, okay, some of you might say, well, what do you, what do you mean by these people, uh, dispensationalists or any Baptists or any, any of the denominations? Well, number one, uh, what is their gospel? is Jesus died, came and died for your sins on the cross and rose again the third day. Now, they will teach uh, the gospel, 1 Corinthians 1 through 4. And they will say, this is the gospel, how Jesus died and shed his blood. Get this, everybody's heard this. This is how you walked the altar, went to the altar, me also. Uh that when Jesus died and poured out his blood for your sins. And if you believe that, and he died uh, according to scriptures, and on the third day he rose from the dead according to scriptures, uh, then if you believe that, uh, his blood has washed your, your sins past, present, and future. Now, you've heard a lot of them teach that. And then you've heard these uh, people or some that get up and they draw. They draw out the dispensational periods here. And they talk about it under the law, and then they got the cross here. And this is a new covenant, the blood covenant. And without the shedding of sins, there is no forgiveness. That's true. Without the shedding, and they, they've got the blood coming down off the cross. And if you believe that, because... That is there, and and it's uh, uh, you know, some of them will go to the far and say the falling away is there's no more blood sacrifice. They don't even talk about the redeeming blood of Christ. It's just you know, forget that, and if you trust Him and He's Lordship of you or Lord of your life or whatever, any of that. It's all heresies versus heresies, and I'm going to show you that here in just a second. So understanding that, and, and y'all people know who I'm talking about, but that's how they teach this 
uh, blood that Christ shed for their sins, past, present, and future. Uh, that's the gospel, 1 Corinthians 1 through 4. So now, so let's go to the Last Supper and let's see what Christ is saying here about this blood that's going to be poured out the next day on the cross. And we're going to see what he's saying here. If that lines up with what you've been taught or what I was raised with or anybody else out there. Okay, all right, so let's take a look at it here. <clears throat> so this is after the supper. He took the cup, gave thanks to them, saying, drink all of it, representing the blood. He said, this is the bread, take and eat this. This is my body. And now here's the blood that's going to be poured out. Now, right here, for this is my blood of the New Testament. Now, you'll hear these dispensations. We're not on the old culture. We're saved by grace through faith. All of that, not of works, at least any man can boast. Uh, so we are under the blood. This we're under the blood covenant. No, you're not. You're. It's going to be unless you repent and believe the truth. Christ is going to tell you in a day he ain't ever known you, and you're going to understand why. Hopefully, here in a minute, because that is not why he come. This is why Jesus Christ was sent from heaven. This is my blood of the New Testament which is poured out, shed, with respect to many, and to place and time here, meaning Jamar, uh, at Passover in the afternoon when he dies, and, and they, they run a sword in him, and his water and the blood pours out, uh, which is poured out with respect to many for the remission or pardon of sins. Okay, people. This many that he come to die for, which is shed for many for the remission of sins, has not got anything to do with the apostles he's teaching, and has not got definitely ain't got anything to do with a bunch of uh, Gentiles that it's not time for them uh, to receive this mystery from Paul. Uh, so, so, and of course, Paul taught the same thing. He didn't teach anything different than what Christ is saying here. So now who, the, the, the salvation question with respect to many, because this has nothing to do with us. It has nothing to do with us. Christ, his, this blood covenant was made, this covenant that God made with Abraham to keep his promise. This is, this many is Abraham's seed. This many is going to uh, represent uh, Abraham, look up there, and you sell them stars if you can number them. This is going to be your seed. Now, so respect to many, the remission of sins, okay? Let's, let's, now, let's take a look. at. And we're going to look at many here. This is not hard, people, but this is definitely all been covered up for all these centuries, but we're at the end now. Uh, so... Let's, let's go to the, the Greek text here, and I've got it highlighted here, and we're going to see right here, here's Christ the blood here of the New Testament right here, the New Covenant, and the, the representing with respect, that's what that means with, with respect to something, with respect to the many. Now the many here is used. Now notice. Now notice the many here is used in the adjective, gen, genitive, plural, masculine. This is not in the feminine gender. So uh, in the context of what's being said here, if if all these people that say that Christ died on the cross and his blood was shed for any of us that believe, neither male or female or what which Paul reveals. But what I'm saying, with respect to many, is there's no feminine gender here. This is in the genitive plural masculine. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means that's what it is. The many represents them. Now, 
Here is the spelling of Polish right here. And I want you to watch this now. Now this is Christ dying for these. That's who he come to pour out his blood for. This is the New Testament, New Covenant. And this is why with respect to them, this is what he, this is what he said. I'm not making this up. You can read it. Okay, now let's find out if, if we can find out in the spelling of many here and the adjective GPM, well, let's go back and let's verify something here. But we, you know, we got to find these things and we got to rightly divide. So let's go back to when Christ was born. So, so let's, let's go back uh, to where he was born. Uh, and we're going to, the first place we're going to stop at is Matthew, the first chapter. Uh, we're going to go there first. And we're going to come down here after the genealogy. We're going to come down here to Matthew 1, 21. You need to make a note of this, people. Please make a note of this. And Mary, the wife of or, or Joseph, Mary here, she will bring forth a son. This is prophecy, of course. And thou shalt call his name Yahshua. Now notice, people, why? Why is all this? Here's the reason. Gar is the reason he shall, she shall bring forth a son. Of course, she's a virgin. She's going to bring forth a son here. And his son, is, her son's going to be called Yahshua, means God saves. And here's the reason. For he shall save his people from or apart from their sins. Okay? Well, let's, his, he did. See, this is why he was born in sin. Here he is, uh, the band revealed to us, and he will save his people his generation are Rachel's children that were slaughtered by Herod to get to Jesus. That's his generation. That's his people. That's what he's talking about here. All right, now let's, uh, let's look at, in the Greek here, let's look at his people apart from their sins. Okay, now notice here. Here is these sins of them, apart from the sins of them. That's in a genitive plural masculine. Now, he, with respect, his blood's going to be poured out. It's genitive plural. Now, notice, I want you to make sure you get this. The definite article sins, that's in the genitive plural feminine. Sins, genitive noun, plural feminine. Make sure that if you just write it down on a piece of paper, Make sure, and of course, that's them. That's who he's going to save. And of course, this context is the future because this is going to be 30 years when Christ is born. About He goes to cross around 30, 31, whatever. Uh, and then that's when this will be fulfilled. He's going to save his. Okay, that's what he come to do. Now, all right, I hope you've got a hold of that. Well, we're not going to stop there. We're going to, we got plenty of verses here. So let's go to, uh, and we will look in the back in the King James. We're going to use the King James, so let's go to Luke 2. Let's go to the Gospel of Luke, early on, second chapter. And we have this devout man, Simeon, that comes to this uh, temple when uh, Joseph and Mary is bringing Christ at 33 days old to fulfill the law and offer the turtle doves or the pigeons for the sacrifice here. All right, so now let's, uh, well, I've got Matthew, sorry, let me go to Luke here. I thought I hit Luke, but evidently I didn't. So this is very important. So let's look in Luke 2 and verse 34. Should everybody come with me to Luke 2, verse 34. And Simeon, this devout man by the Holy Spirit, comes into the temple the same time uh, Joseph and the mother Mary, uh, and then he is uh, talking to them. Now he turns to Mary to give her this prophecy. Because Joseph, he don't turn, the Bible says he didn't turn to 
Mary and, and, and Joseph, because Joseph is going to be dead when this is fulfilled. So this is Mary. This, this prophecy is, uh, you know, you've heard them do this uh, song, uh, Mary, did you know? Did you know your baby boy? Did you know? But see, they leave out the truth of that. All the songs are convoluted. All of the songs are, because they leave out the resurrection of the first fruits. Uh, that's the one they, the Lord, he lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today, he walks with me and talks. Well, Christ Jesus only lived today when he was resurrected. The first fruits of Israel lives today. That's the one new man. You can't leave them out, people, but they've been left out. All right, so the point being is, so we have Simeon blessing Mary here, and his mother, and, and says, Behold, Christ is said, or the cause, and we have the ice here, means in the place or time. And, of course, that time is going to be when the fall happens. Well, that fall or crash is going to be when Herod set out a degree to kill all of the two-year-old males, two years old and under. That's the fall in Israel. That, that's great fall that's coming in Israel is going to be real close to when Simeon was telling Mary this because Christ is 33 days old here according to the law and now he's talking to Mary hey there's your your child is going to be the cause of this crash and that is uh, the slaughter of, of the children of Israel uh, all right now but also he's also going to be involved notice and the resurrection of the, they translate this in English, rising again. But it should have been the word resurrection, English word resurrection right here. And see, and this resurrection of many in Israel. Okay, now notice this is Anastasius. Now, if you're looking at, then this is why, uh, this is why it's, it's deceptive, people, because... I'm gonna. There, here's a plain Bible, and most people, this is all they have. They don't even know there's such a thing as a Strong's number. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, "Behold, this child is set for the fall and the rising again of many." Well, the rising again of many could have been Bar uh, Barabbas trying to raise up an army to defeat Rome when Christ refused him, uh, and he was arrested because he was a rebel, a upriser. Uh, so rising again could mean many. I mean, it does not hit a, it does, it's not a word, but this fall and rise again of many in Israel, uh, and that sign will be spoken. They read over it just like nothing, and it, there's nothing here that's very important. I've watched preachers preach this and read over this, and they'll say that Simeon uh, knew that Christ was the Savior, and he was filled with the Holy Spirit, but when it gets to this, it's just nothing. So there again, you can read that for a thousand years and not understand this word here and the Greek is the resurrection. Now, if we read it in the translated right in English, translated, and he said for the fall and the resurrection of many in Israel. Now, wait a minute. Where is there a resurrection of many in Israel? When did that happen? And that's going to be a miracle? And that miracle is going to be contradicted, spoken against. This is prophecy to also. So now let's, let's, let's go back and uh, let's look at the King James with the Strongs here. Okay, so it's set for the resurrection. That's Anastasius. So see, you need to get that, mind, get that out of your mind and put resurrection of many. Now wait a minute. Many here. Oh, wait a minute. Did he tell the apostles? that his blood is going to be poured out with respect to many, and that pardon and their sins, uh, did he say that? Oh, and, and Simeon is saying, this resurrection of many in Israel and this miracle will be spoken against. Do you know what that means? It's prophecy, people. That means disputed. Refused again, contradicted, deny, gainsay, speak against. Well, see, the people that preach this other gospel, this other Jesus, they don't know, probably don't even know about this, but they have just taken and run and been passed down from generation to generation to generation. And, of course, a lot of these sects break off. You don't just have 
uh, independent Baptists now. You have Southern Baptists. Uh, you have First Baptists. You have Free Will Baptists. You have Anabaptists. You have a Dispensationalist Baptists. Uh, you have all kinds of sects of Baptists. Same with Church of Christ. It's just not one church. You have all kinds of different sects. Methodist, Presbyterian. Uh, you know, you, you see, the, but the point being is they all do, they all teach that Christ died and his blood was shed for them. Okay, now let's look. The resurrection of many. Now, here is the here is the proof right here. And this was 30 years or so before Christ ever went to the tree and actually almost two years before these many were slaughtered here in this fall by Herod. Okay, so let's look at the, uh, the Greek text here. And here we have uh, Luke 2.34. And here we have in the Greek and the Anastasius, the resurrection of many. Uh-oh, wait, oh, may there, many? This is the word polis. Uh, this is uh, 4183 in the Greek, but look at how the Greek is using it. It's an, an adjective. And it's in the genitive plural masculine. Remember, notice now, people. It's it's uh, adjective, the part of speech, adjective, genitive, plural, masculine. Remember that now. The resurrection of many. Now, and that uh, in Israel, and that miracle here will be contradicted completely refused and covered up by the, the Sanhedrin and by the Pharisees and the Sadducees and, of course, King Herod and the Edomites, uh, Esau. But now this is very important right here, and you're the spelling of Polish, and notice here, adjective GPM. All right, so let's go, let's go right back to the supper, which is, now this is when Christ is, uh, 33 days old, and Mary's being told all of this. And now let's go when it's going to be fulfilled. So let's go to the Last Supper. And let's see when it's going to be fulfilled here. <clears throat> of course, we started with Matthew 1, then we went to Luke. Now we're going back to the, uh, the Last Supper here. Here we are. Notice, in his blood here, uh, the new covenant, the respect, uh-oh, exactly the many Simeon revealed to Mary, and exactly an adjective, genitive, plural, masculine. And that, that many, with respect to many, is poured at that time, his blood is poured out for the pardon of, of, of their sins, the pardon of Israel. It's the pardon of these. That's why he come to save his people from their sins, people. Right here is the Last Supper. This is what now, if you don't see what I've just showed you here and proved it to you, I'm not through, but understanding with respect to the many, the resurrection of the many. Now, very important, and that is the going to be the forgiveness or the pardon of sins, and that's in the genitive plural feminine, a noun in the genitive plural feminine. Uh, very important there for you to understand this is what this is talking about. Now, there again, let's think now. I'm trying to slow down here so everybody can let this... I know it's going to be shocking, and some people might be very upset. And I, I mean, you, you, when you're deceived, and we've all been deceived. So, but when we study the Scripture and rightly divide, and you're serious about studying, this has always been here. You go back to the 1611 uh, uh, King James Bible, this is this has always been here, and all these King James Bible people that want to draw up the on the board there across when Christ died, and this is the periods of dispensationals, 
and his blood was poured out and they are very angry, a lot of them, because the preachers are not preaching uh, the blood atonement. Well, this blood atonement that Christ started with the New Testament had nothing to do with us, had nothing to do with apostles. It had to do with the redemption of Israel, the first fruits under the law. That's what this is about, people. Now, when you move them out and put yourself in there, you have just you have you have just interjected and made the father out to be a liar because he sent his son to do this. Now I'm there again when I say that uh, I believe that. I believe, and by me believing at one time, being raised in a Baptist, and it's not beating up the Baptist, it don't make any difference in Baptist or who you are. you got to understand, he did not come. Now, I'm going to give, and we're going to give some verses here that Christ taught this right out in the open, and you got it in your King James Bible. All right, let's go to, uh, let's go to Matthew here real quick. Let's go to, uh, let's see, yeah, let's go to Matthew, King James Bible. Let's go to Matthew 15, 15, 24. Traditions and commandments, okay, so let's, let's drop down here to verse 24. <clears throat> now, what did Christ, he saying? Uh, so we have uh, well let's pick it up here in 22 and of course this this has the woman here the faith of the Canaanite woman then Jesus sent uh, went hence and departed unto the coast of Tyre and Sidon now you know Tyre is over there Israel is bombing Tyre over there I think yesterday over on the sea coast uh, I was seeing where they were knocking out some buildings over there in Tyre and Sidon, uh, and behold, a woman of Cana came out of the coast, cried to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, uh, son of David, for my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. Okay. But Lotus, but he answered her not a word. Christ didn't, he didn't answer her any word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away. For she cries after us. Okay. Well, let's see what Christ says. Now, this is what he said. But he answered and said, I am not. Now, what does that mean, Larry? Not. Uh, that means then, but, but he changed his mind, right? Well, let's see, not. Uh, th that, that's an absolute. When you go down and look at the rest of the definition, that's an absolute negative. No, not never. <clears throat> I am not sent. God the Father did not send me. But in this place or time, ice, and that's at the cross, when he died and the graves broke open, that means when this, that I'm not sent, but to this time, when my time season comes, the hours come now for me to go to the tree. I am not come, uh, but for the lost, and that means destroyed. Herod killed them all. He killed, that means lost, but it means uh, figuratively, literally destroy, die, or perish. I did not come except for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And that's who he come and got, people. Now, there again, I don't care how you break it down, uh, but people read right over this and don't wake them up or anything to, to understand that Jesus Christ was from the tribe of Judah. Now see, the, the here is where the argument would come in. Israel rejected him. So he turns to us nations, us Gentiles. <clears throat> but there again, what you're not understanding, he knew Israel. He said, uh, thy peace is taken of you, come right down on a donkey. If thou only knew to thy peace, but because you would have, it's been taken from you. But he said, uh, these stones would cry out. But the point being is, so he knew 
They were blinded and they rejected him, but not these first fruits. They were the two-year-old males that were killed by Herod. That's who he come to get. See? So that's the lost sheep of the house of Israel, not Jacob. Jacob will be a remnant of Jacob, but that's after our resurrection and the seventh trump. That's when Christ sits his feet on the Mount of Olives. And there will come out of Zion a deliverer. For he will take away the same with that covenant. He will take away their sins also. He will deliver uh, Jacob out of its ungodliness. All right, so, uh, so this is Christ's sin now. But see, you're not going to get them to say that because uh, that's Israel. No, this is who he come to get was the first fruits of Israel. That He's a Jew that come to save his people. We do not come into the picture until the Father's promises uh, and made the promise to Abraham he would send the Holy Spirit to birth of, of this truth. That's what, there is what has been completely covered up and left in, out, people. All right, now, what about this one? Let's look in Matthew 10. Let's take a look at Matthew 10. Now, we have Mark also saying, uh, showing this. So it's just not Matthew, but uh, while we're Matthew here, so let's look in Matthew 10, and let's see if I've got it. I think I've got it highlighted here. This is amazing what he's saying here. Uh, oh, let's see here. Well, let's see where Matthew 10. Uh, this is where I might have, might, 10, 28, maybe I've already run over it here. Uh, no. Matthew 10. I had all this wrote down here. I will show you this. I have all these scriptures here, but we will find it. Uh, Matthew 20. I'm sorry. I went back too far. Oh, I didn't go. It's Matthew 20. Yeah, okay. So. Let's look in Matthew 20. Let's see if it's here. Uh, here it is. I'm sorry. Matthew 20, 28. Everybody make a note of it. I've got it here. So we have Matthew 15, 24. Now we've got Matthew 20, 28. Now look, look what he says. This is Jesus. Here is your King James Bible. I've just got the Strong's, but if you just look at the English, but this, these people that say uh, they believe every word of the King James Bible, then why don't you teach this? Even as the Son of Man come, or came, not to be ministered unto, but to minister. Now notice, to minister to the apostles and to those that were following him, and to give his life a ransom for many. Oh, my goodness. So we went back to Simeon, many. We went back to the supper, many. Uh, we went to the lost sheep. And now we have got Christ saying this in Matthew 20, uh, 28 that he not only come to minister, but he come to lay his life down <clears throat> for the ransom for many. Okay, well, let's see. Let's see something, people. Is here we have the third witness here. So let's look in the Greek text and let's see how they spell many. Now, what are we going to do with this, people? He come to ransom, to buy back uh, for many here, to lay his life down, his soul of him, to redeem or to buy back uh, for many. Now there's your spelling exactly in the Greek, polis, and we have the Greek in Matthew 20, 28 using an adjective, 
genitive plural masculine. See? So he come to die on the tree and his blood was poured. And we've already seen that his blood is poured out for the sins of many. That is, so here's the same many and it's an adjective, genitive, plural, masculine. All right, so when we go back now, I'm just going to make my way back into Greek here. Uh, and of course, we have the lost sheep here. We have those uh, those that are destroyed by Herod, the lost sheep. Uh, but let's go let's, let's go on back here. Uh, now we have Luke two uh, thirty four, and here we have the same many, same spelling, adjective, genitive, plural, uh, masculine. And Simeon is revealing they they are in the resurrection. This is the many in the resurrection. See, this is who he come to die for. Here is the resurrection of Christ and them. See, he's set for their crash, but he's also the cause when he dies on the tree and the graves break open three days and nights later, when he get up, gets up, they get up. And so here's the resurrection of his brethren, the many saints that slept. Accusative, genitive, plural, I mean adjective, genitive, plural, same thing that we just left there in Matthew uh, 20, verse 28. Now let's go on back. And let's go to when Christ at the supper. Uh, uh, let's go to the last supper here. Uh, and of course, here is why he's born. Uh, the sins here. Uh, these sins right here. See, these sins, uh, genitive plural feminine, and, and sins is a noun in a genitive plural. Well, uh, so let's uh, watch now what we're going to prove about the how the even sins are used in the Greek. So here we are, right here. Notice now. So here we have uh, the, the covenant, and that's with respect to the many. Adjective, genitive, plural, many. Uh, uh, masculine. See, we have showed this uh, from Simeon to here to Matthew. Uh, we have showed this three times here. Uh, this is why he come for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. This is the many. This is them. This is why he was sent. This is what the blood covenant, the new covenant. And where did this start? Where did God make this promise or covenant? With the man Abraham. This is his seed that would be as the stars in heaven. This is now. He's got more seed because he's got a remnant of Jacob that will be, uh, Christ will save when he returns. And he's got us. We are the first fruits of these spirits, of, of these uh, children here. That's why Paul says, you are the first fruits, or you are the spirit of the first fruits here. All right, so, and the pardon of sin. Now notice here, and here we have it in the GPM. What did we just leave? Uh, the, the sin there is also in the uh, genitive plural there. Uh, feminine there is what we just uh, showed here. Here it is right here. Matthew 1, he will save his people from the sins of them. There it is. The as a noun, genitive, plural, feminine. All right, let's go right back to the cross or the Last Supper. And, uh, and we'll see uh, if I can, let's see if it's going to let me get back. Yeah, here it is. Well, there it is. Oh, uh, now, this is why he come to pardon the sins of men. Here is it now, genitive plural feminine. We, we're proving it, showing the English and proving everything according to the Greek text. We're proving it, people. This is how amazing. It's just, it's amazing. It's all here. Now, for those that are seeing this, and I know that uh, because of deception, uh, uh, that's been there for hundreds and hundreds of years, and you think, well, gosh, uh, my family or my friends just died that didn't know this. Well, uh, the Scripture talks about the heresies people for generation to generation. When we see what Peter prophesied, not just Paul, but let's, took a, let's take a look here in the first century, uh, uh, the end of Peter's teaching, and that's Second Peter 2 Peter 2.1. One One of the most important verses, uh, false prophets and teachers 
There come into being false prophets in Israel among the people. Even as there shall be, that's future tense that, that uh, Peter's talking about. There will be false teachers among you in the future who shall bring in a damnable heresy and that heresy denies the husband that bought them. We, I've just showed you them is the many saints that slept. Them is who he come to get. Uh, them are the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Them is respect to the new covenant of his blood that's going to be poured out for their sins to redeem them. This and this will bring people that teach this will bring upon themselves with destruction. Now notice what he says, and many shall follow, future tense, on in the future, all the way through. Many shall follow their penurious ways by reason of whom the way or dose of the truth shall be evil spoken of. The truth is, people, Christ come and the new covenant to redeem them under the law, to buy them back. Then he goes away by the promise of the Father at Pentecost to send uh, the Holy Spirit to birth the apostles and all those that come in to hear Peter stand up and preach uh, the pardoning of sins. But that's talking about Israel and talking about uh, to pardon the sins against uh, the Christ come to die to redeem the one new man, the first fruits. Now that's what they were to preach and to baptize people in. Let me show you here. This is uh, real quick. There's a couple more places and we're going to close. Now look what Peter says when he stands up in Acts 2. Now we've talked a lot about Acts, uh, the preaching there in Acts 2. And, uh, but let's, let's, let's see what Peter was preaching to the Israelites who crucified Christ. He said that. Uh, so let's go on down here. So when Peter stands up to preach, and he says uh, right here, Him being delivered by the determined counsel and foreknowledge of God, you have taken, and you wicked hands, you've crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosened the pains of death, because it was not impossible that he should be holding of it. For David spake concerning, I foresee, foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice and my language was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope. That's the blessed hope. That's the hope of Israel. Christ come and redeem those. David knew this. Uh, notice here. I, I need to show you all. A lot of people had not seen this. So let's go back to the Psalms. Let's go back real quick to Psalms and show you exactly the David was a prophet and a king, uh, a priest of the order of Melchizedek. So let's go back to let's go back to Psalms here. And look what David said. How amazing is this? Uh, I've talked about this a lot, but there's people that could come in and see this video who's never seen uh, what David said in Psalms 130. So let's take a look at it here. Very short Psalms, a song of degrees. Well, let's take a look what he's saying. I am going to go to the apostolic here, the Greek. Uh, let me get this. All right, so my soul waits. All right, now here we have, let's pick it up in verse 6. My soul hope, now this is the blessed hope. This means full expectation. My soul, the hope, upon the Lord, the Father, out of which the morning uh, watch until night. Now, 137, let Israel hope upon the Lord, for with the Lord, this is the Creator, the Father, for with the Lord Jehovah here, is mercy and it's abundant. Ransom, and there it is. What did Christ come? He said, I come to die and ransom many. So ransoming here, so by him ransoming, notice right here, ransoming and verse 8. And he shall, future tense, 
there it is in Matthew 20, uh, verse uh, 28, we just left. He didn't come to min uh, be ministered, he come to minister and to uh, ransom, uh, to die, lay his soul down for the ransom of many. And right here is David. And he shall future ransom the Israel out of all of Israel's lawlessness. Everything is going on in Jerusalem. All of the Sanhedrin that was apostate and calling Caesar their king and all of the impious ones. And here David says, he shall ransom. And that's exactly what Christ come, Matthew 20, that we just left. He would ransom. He would lay his soul down for the ransom of many. And there, here David is prophesying what Christ, uh, we just got through studying in Matthew. How amazing is that? Now let's go back, uh, let's go back to Acts 2.26. Uh, all right, and I will go to the King James here because it has the Greek also. All right, therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad more, but also my flesh shall rest uh, in the grave uh, and no one this hope. David knew uh, that, that his son uh, through his loins would come and redeem the Israel. He was given that spiritual insight. Because thou will not leave my soul, he's talking about his son there in Hades, uh, that's uh, Psalm 16. Uh, uh, leave my soul in hell, neither shall thou suffer the Holy One to see corruption. For thou hast made known to me the ways of life, thou shalt make full of joy with my countenance. Uh, uh, man, brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriot David. Now, what is uh, uh, Peter going to tell him? That David's dead and buried, and he's still in his tomb with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, uh, and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him that the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He, seeing this before, spoke of, now with respect, uh, with respect there's that word, 42, with respect of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in Hades, neither was his flesh did see corruption. All right, so now let's continue here. Now look at what Peter's going to say. At this Jesus who God had resurrected, wherefore we all were witnesses, the apostles there, wherefore being by the right hand of God exalted, he says, uh, and having received of the Father the promise, you see, the promise he had to send the Holy Spirit. This, and this is what is Peter saying. Uh, the promise that God made to Abraham, this promise uh, not of just his seed uh, would be as the stars of heaven, but this promise of the Holy Ghost, he is shed forth. He's poured this promise out here at Pentecost, this which you now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he said himself, the Lord said to my Lord, sit on my right hand until I make thy foes uh, thy footstool. Now look what Peter's saying. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know surely that God hath made the same Jesus whom you have crucified. He's made him the same Jesus uh, you crucified, both Lord and your Messiah. So he is your Lord, and he is your Messiah, Christ, or this means Messiah, Messiah. Now, so now, and of course, the Lord here is, in fact, you know, he's David's Lord. And of course, look what uh, 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 37, 237. Now, when they heard this, these Israelites were pricked in their heart. And they said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Man, brethren, what in the world are we going to do here? And look what Peter said. And then Peter said unto them, Now notice, people, get this. See, everything we've been taught has been wrong. So look what Peter is saying to these at Pentecost here that come in to keep the feast. Repent, turn, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the authority of Jesus Christ, in this place or time for the remission of sins. Okay, now. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Right, now, now, pay real close attention here, people. This is amazing. 
But see, the, the scripture is true. We have to dig these things out. Now, so what was this telling them to repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus? At that place and time, the remission of the pardon of sins. Okay, now, uh, very, very important here. So now, let's look at the Greek here. Now look what is said here. Can you believe this? Got it highlighted here. Jesus Christ, and be turned and repent and believe, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, and the pardoning of sins. Okay, now what you look is, here is eight, G859, that means pardon or forgive or leave. And that is in the noun, accusative, singular, feminine. And we have the sins here, the pardon and the sins. And that's a noun, and that's in the genitive, plural, feminine. Now, let's go back to the Last Supper. How amazing is this? Let's go back to the Last Supper. Uh, and... We're going to see now, just remember what Peter just said, that repent and be baptized uh, for the pardon of those sins. So let's go back uh, here to Matthew 28, or 26, excuse me, 28. I'll get there, surely, I think I will. Anyhow, let's see here. I go through all these verses we've been at, and there's Luke. We ought to be coming up on Matthew here. There's we've been a lot of verses to prove all this. Here we are now. Here we are. For this is my blood of the new covenant, the one with respect to many being poured out for the release of sins. There, that's what the apostolic is saying. So let me let you. Those are the King James Bible. Let's read the King James Bible. For this is my blood of the New Testament which is poured out with respect for the many for in that time. Now, do y'all see this right here? Do y'all see this? I want to I want, make sure that you take Matthew 26, 28, and let's highlight that in your King James Bible. Whether you got the Strong's, it's still in the English for the remission of sins. All right, so let's, let's, I'm going to highlight that in green. All right, we see that. Now, in the Greek text, let's look for the remission exactly right here with respect. Right here, the many, we've already showed who that is, but we're looking at that blood, that blood that was poured out, and we have in right here in the Greek, the same that, that was uh, revealed in in the English here. So I'm going to put this in green also. All right, so let's just change that to green. All right, so now, uh, so we have right here, we have in the pardon or forgiveness. Notice, and we have it a noun. And notice we have it in accusative, singular, feminine. And notice we have sins, a noun, and we have it in the genitive, plural, feminine. Okay, now, it's just like I could take these uh, these three words in the Greek here, or English, and I could copy them right there. Now, let's go to Pentecost. Now, this, is, this was at the night before Christ died. He had the supper with his apostles, and this is what he was telling them what was going to happen. All right, so now let's go to Pentecost where they had to be because the promise of the Father sending the Holy Spirit on them would reveal every bit of this. They, they, were, they understood it pretty much. But when that Holy Spirit failed and, and uh, revealed all of this, they never turned back. They never left. And they died for the faith of preaching this to every creature under heaven back then. All right, now, so, uh, so I'm going to stay in the Greek. Y'all, please get a hold of this. And we're going to go back to... Uh, we're going to go back to Pentecost. Well, let's see if I can go to Pentecost this way. All right, let's see. 
we're going to get there. Just hold on. We just been through a lot of scriptures, and I could bring it up, but I'll just click our way back there to it. This just shows you all the scriptures we proved this by. Uh, but now we're going to Pentecost. Uh, when Peter stood up to preach here to Israel. Uh, that's Matthew 28. All of these verses, I hope you've made notes of all of these. Uh, <clears throat> here's 2 Peter. So we ought to be, there we are right here. So let's come down now. We're in Acts 2, and let's come all the way down here to when the, they said, what in the world are we going to do now, Peter, to the apostles? How can we get how can we get straightened out here? We did all this, but notice what Peter is preaching about this baptism here, people. This is what you've got to see. He, it can't be something different that Christ taught them 50 days earlier. It has to be said in the exact same way format is what Christ told them at the Last Supper. All right, so let's, uh, let's look at it here. And here it is, right here. Now there is, in the Greek, is exactly what are we going to do? Repent and be baptized. Uh, thou upon the authority, name of Jesus, the Messiah, for what? And here we have the same preposition, 15, 19, that Christ told them uh, in Matthew 26, 28. Uh, right, why the blood covenant was poured out uh, in this kind of use of the same Greek word, uh, the same uh, Strong's number, pardon, and the same sins. And notice, uh, pardon here, is a noun, accusative, singular, feminine. Sins here that Christ used uh, in Matthew 26, 28 is a noun, genitive, plural, feminine. This is what they were baptized in, exactly what Christ come to reveal the new covenant with respect to the sins of many. That's what was being preached and that's what the being baptized in the water uh, back then, there's only one Lord, one faith, one baptism. But this, the what Peter was preaching that you've got to do is exactly what he fulfilled, that his blood was poured out for the sins of many. And that forgiveness for the sins of many is uh, 859, and it's a noun, accusative, singular, feminine, and the sins is a noun, genitive, uh, plural, feminine. Now, there again, I want you to make sure these exactly, y'all, Peter's using exactly what Christ used when he taught Peter and the apostles at the Last Supper, what this was all about. All right, so uh, remember, 859, accusative, noun, singular, feminine. Sin, noun, genitive, plural, feminine. Remember that right there. All right, I'm going to go back. I have to go back, make sure that you understand this. Uh, and we go back to Matthew 26, 28. Okay, 26. And we're going to come down to the Last Supper here, 28. And he said, eat this bread, this is my body, drink this cup, for this is the blood of the new covenant. And it's going to be poured out. <clears throat> that my blood's going to be poured out right here. We have exactly in the green, and it's going. To, my blood is going to be of the new covenant, and it's going to, uh, with respect to many, poured in the remission or the pardon of sins. Noun, accusative, singular, feminine, sins. Noun, genitive, plural, feminine, same thing that Peter uh, was preaching 50 days later to all of those that did that, and that would... But it had to be at the cross and what he come to, uh, to fulfill, y'all. And that's what Peter is preaching here. Uh, so now, as I close here, understand, see, the, the doctrine and the false teaching uh, that has been going on since the end, what I showed you the first century, when they say that and we've all been raised in that. So there again, but you've got to understand that's what you've been taught. Whether you're 
a dispensationalist or whatever doctrine you come under or an independent or Catholicist or, or Pentecostal, uh, whether you're a big Pentecostal church, a Jimmy Swaggart or any of those big Pentecostal churches, they believe that he died on the cross for their sins and his blood is what uh, we're redeemed by his blood. That's not who he come to redeem uh, the children of Rachel that were slaughtered by Herod. That was his mission. Now he sends the Holy Spirit, as Peter said, uh, believe this and you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, which will guide you into all truth. So that's the order. You've got to believe why he come and died and poured out his blood for the sins of Rachel's children. Now, once that went through Israel, they killed all the apostles and then God destroyed them in 70 A.D. Now, when Paul comes on the scene, he has revealed every bit of this, and this is what he calls the mystery. It is still a mystery. It's still what we're talking about tonight is still a mystery for the, out there because all, all of so-called Christianity believes that his blood that was shed on the cross, if you accept him, is for your sins. But that don't happen until you hear the truth about his death, burial, and resurrection, and believe, then now we are also redeemed and our sins uh, are washed in the blood of Christ then. But you can't move in and then leave them out. That's the whole, and that is what has happened to, that's what they call a heresy. And that is a uh, contradicting of Christ coming and redeeming the first fruit, see. So you got to go back to the cross, people, and you got to see why he come. Now, if you believe that, then you've been born again, and, and his blood has washed our sins, and now you've been sealed with the promise that God made to Abraham that was fulfilled. That seed was fulfilled, and now we're the spiritual seed of Abraham, not the genealogy that come through Isaac, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Christ. No, we come through as far as hearing uh, and being born of the Spirit. Now, that's why Paul says we have the first fruits of the Spirit. You see, because we believe the Spirit of God that sent His Son to redeem them. See, that's what you've got to come to see. All right, so this is going to shock a lot of people. May the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob... May that spirit, what is your spirit, as we trade the scripture one another. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, soon coming King with them. Amen.